Well, hello, Crystal Terry. I was sitting here contemplating. Oh, well, let me go into prayer first before I go in. As you notice, I do most things, wing, I wing it, uh, but I got I have some things written down today. But anyway, uh, mm, God, you're so sweet. You're sweeter than honey. From the honeycomb, you are the great I am. You are the beginning, you are the end. My alpha, my omega, my beginning, my forever. Ooh, I can't go on without you. I need you daily. Thank you, Lord. I pray for the families who lost their children in the shooting. I pray for the family of the shooter. I, I pray for justice to be <laughs> revealed. I pray, Lord Jesus, for uh, for the world and, and the situation that it's in. You know, I pray to God that they turn to you, not just because of shooting. I pray that they turn to you because you are the one, the creator. <sighs> They everything. Um, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Well, whoo, I was sitting here, and like I said, I was debating on if I wanted to say this because everybody's talking about the movie Black Panther, and it's an excellent movie. I haven't seen it, but I listened to it. Uh, I went to church and heard a uh, pastor preach about it, and like I said, I, I couldn't comment on it at the time because, like I said, I pray over things before I open my mouth. I I'm learning to do it. I need to shut up. So uh, I've been praying over it, thinking about what to do, you know. And um, anyway, so God put on my heart some things to say, but I was like, okay, Lord, I don't know. I don't want to say this and it be taken out of context, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not trying to bash no film or nothing like that. So really, I'm not doing that. Uh, and again, like I said, I feel like a freak of nature because a lot of things that, that go on with a lot of people's lives, I don't know. My life is affected in many ways, but my life is not a, a, affected. I, I affect it the same as everyone. So I see things sometimes different. I, well, often I see things different than other people. And I believe my fighting spirit came from my mother's a fighter, but my daddy's was a fighter too. So I don't know. Somewhere in there, one day I'm going to really look up my family tree and find out, you know, uh, where I get all this stuff that I do and how I am, you know, but um, all of it, I just, I know where a majority of it comes from, but some other stuff I would like to know. But um, anyway, um, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, I'm a, a procrastinate on what to say, how to say it. And so then God gave me a way to say what I really want to say. And, uh, uh, So in the meantime, I'm studying, looking it up. I had already written my stuff early today. Uh, and uh, oh, let me tell you a little bit of this, too. Uh, I had already asked you all to pray for me because I had to do a fight again. And the devil showed up and messed with my vehicle. But I did. I took care of what I needed to because I helped kept God. I, I prayed. I said, all things work together for them that love the Lord. And God got me through. So I want to give shout out and praise to God Almighty for that. Okay, so I'm sitting here and uh, drinking 7 Up. Uh, and I'm going through my Facebook page and my cousin, oh my God, my cousin Sheila, they keep me on my cousin, they keep me on my toes because they know how to get me just irked. And this woman calling herself an educator. It's saying some stuff about that black people can't go to principals and go to the court system and fight for their rights. They won't be heard. They'll be dismissed. I'm like, oh, my God. Woo, Lord Jesus. I'm trying not to. Ooh, I don't want to cuss. But anyway, that gave me the strength and courage to say, okay, now I know what God's saying. So I'm going to go on with what the message that God put on my heart. But anyway, I'm going to go into detail and address Miss Thang uh, a little more. Uh, at the end of this, and really, I don't have to say much to it because this right here is going to is going to bang her in her head a lot, really deep. You know what I'm saying? It's going to put her in check real quick because she's a liar, and that's not true. Uh, it hasn't happened in my life that way, and I'm going to show you some things. Uh, 
Woo, Lord, woo, she got me right there. I said, and she bought, and if you have any questions, she had nerve enough, the audacity to say, uh, leave comments below. I'm like, oh my goodness, for real? I know she got a lot of comments. I don't even want to read them. But, uh, woo, Lord Jesus. Woo, Lord. Oh, so the things people say that I always try to stir up racism. And I always, that's what gets me. Woo, that's, that's another thing I put on my heart. I'm going to get that another day. But people that's always trying to bring up racism and always trying to make themselves their, their, their color their race better than someone else's. I was, you know, I was stern, stirring up hell. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna blink out a little bit, and uh, we're going to uh, numbers, uh, numbers in the Bible, Holy Bible, King James, I N I B, numbers thirteen thirty through thirty three. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Neph Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Neph Neph Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Basically, you get it. Talking about being afraid because somebody looks bigger than them. And somebody told them that somebody were like giants and that they were like grasshoppers and they couldn't conquer them. And so, my subject is going to come from there. My Giants. That's the title of this. My Giants. And uh, like I said... A lot of people was talking about the movie, and I'm not even going there. Uh, like I said, I haven't seen it yet, so I, I would like to see it for myself. And I'm proud that there is a movie that's, that everybody tells me that's portraying uh, black people in a positive manner. That's fantastic. Uh, but I want to address this woman. <coughs> Excuse me, trying to get over the rest of that call, yes. But I want to address this woman and hear it. These are my giants, my mama and my aunts, who taught me that I can do all things. I don't see, uh, I wasn't raised and taught that there were, uh, that, I, that there were giants and that I was a, a grasshopper in my own sight. Uh, and I don't teach my kids that and I don't teach my grandbabies that. I don't. Uh, they taught us that we could do all things through Jesus Christ who died for our sins. Uh, Jesus is uh, uh, my giant. You know, he uh, died and he sent a comforter. He took the place of us. He gave his life. He didn't have to. His father is God. He could have went on about his way. But he fulfilled a prophecy. Get with that. He fulfilled a prophecy. To please his daddy. He's a giant. Moses. Because he sacrificed. His fame and his money. For his people. David. Because he became. Uh, he repented. He could repent. You know. And, and repent and saying he was sorry. And I loved how David would say he was sorry. And not only that. Yeah, he, he killed Goliath, the, the, the big giant. He, he killed a real giant. He's a bad dude. When he was a little boy, he killed a giant. But what, to me, made him very powerful is he knew how to humble himself before God so God would always give him another chance. He knew how to go back to God and tell God he was sorry and he wasn't going to mess up anymore and it made him a better king. I like that. He's my giant. 
Saul. Saul's one of my giants because he would uh he asked for wisdom to lead the people. He knew he couldn't do it alone, but he could have asked for fame and fortune and all kind of other things, a whole lot of more wives and all that. But he asked for wisdom, some knowledge. That's powerful. I love that. Another one, he's a giant. Another one of my giants is teachers. Teachers are giants. They teach children in the land of fire. As we see, we witness all these shootings going on, these kids killing kids and adults killing, going on mass uh, mass killings and everything. But these teachers are in there trying to teach the students. And here it is, they're trying to protect the students. And here it is, somebody comes in and, and, and takes, just takes and kills the kids and killing them. Their lives is in jeopardy and students trying to fight them. A lot of violence in the school system. Teachers not getting the pay that they feel that they deserve. Those are my heroes. Uh, those are my giants. Uh, uh, the police, uh, the uh, EMS, the fire, the doctors, uh, nurses, uh, police protecting, uh, responding in the line of uh, in the line of duty. Uh, and uh, 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 accepting every cow, running, uh, farming, running and burning buildings when everybody else is running out. Doctors giving first, second, and third chances at a new life. Nurses prepared for anything, whatever injury might come into the hospital. Uh, the first asked to see the injury. Yeah, those those are my giants. Uh, And all my life, I had seen, uh, I've had uh, giants in my life. Uh, uh, my play uncles, you know, Uncle Rich and Uncle Donna Lee now, they, they, they were my giants. Uh, I liked the way they kept their hair pressed and permed. They had the little scarf and, and they had the silk little shirts back in the day and the nice shoes. And, and they uh, drove the Cadillacs and had the pretty women. But they could take a Cadillac. And parking with one parallel parking with one hand. And I thought that was awesome because I love to drag. And I always wanted to drag when I was little. I always admired that. And I thought that was powerful. And they were my jams because I looked up to them because I admired them. I, I, I liked what they were doing. I liked the way they handled themselves. I liked their smoothness and their smooth top. Uh, my aunt, my aunt Mamie, you know, uh, she had eight children, no husband. She worked two to three jobs to support her kids, refusing welfare. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's, one, that's, that's another one of my giants. Yeah. Yeah, one of my giants. Uh, my Aunt Bet, my Aunt Bet Gow, Sunday school teacher, worked at the Census Bureau. In a racist environment at the time, but she, she's she she's my hero. She purchased a brand new car off the assembly line for money that she made. She owned her own home. All of my aunties, as a matter of fact, own their own homes. God bless them. Those are my giants. Uh, my uh my neighbor in Clarksdale Housing Projects. Charlie, a uh, white young man uh, who went a boy, he hit me and Charlie chased him and called him and he made me hit him back. <laughs> that was Miss Bonnie's son. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Powell and Mr. Roger, two white teachers. Uh, Mr. Powell, I believe he was a priest because he stayed in St. Bonifus and he was a uh, School teacher, Mr. Roger, yeah, at Oma Carmichael. Uh, they came to a school that was majority black, Oma Carmichael, over on Hancock. They came to that school and they gave their hour. And uh, that's why to this day I know uh, country roads take me home to the place where I belong, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, take me home. I know uh, John Denver sounds. 
I was taught those by Mr. Powell. He was our music teacher. And Mr. Roger, he played a, a good time. And uh, Kookaberry sets in the tree and all those type of things. Those were my giants. They came. I seen them come through that. Be in the school. Be in the on, only what? It wasn't that many white teachers in our school. And, and they came. The, they And they taught. They gave their best. No fear. Just walking. Doing walking in their passion, doing what they loved. Those are my giants. Uh, Miss Rose, Miss Diane, and as I pointed out earlier today, Miss America, 1973, she was our school teacher at our school. She won the first, she's one of the black, one of the uh, uh, 1973 Black America. She was from, uh, uh, I think it was Moorhead or somewhere, Kentucky. But yeah, God bless her. These are the people that were my heroes. She's, we, I, I was in the presence of giants. And then with society and the world sees us giants, I was, I was in that presence. God blessed me and put me in that. So I, I'm not really, please excuse me, but don't excuse me for sitting back and being in awe of, okay, yeah, oh, you know, these, this is happening, and and then like that woman's trying to say that what black people can't do. Now I, I've seen what black people can do. I've seen what white people can do. I've seen the togetherness. I've seen the one. I don't I don't agree with nothing that she was saying. And uh, like I said though, uh, getting back to her, uh, when I went to school, I had Mr. Cleo Joyner. He he was my giant. Not only that, when I uh he retired, he ended up being a Watkins man. He was selling uh, uh uh cinnamon and pepper and stuff. My mother would purchase from him. You know, he taught math. Uh, I, I had people around me that told me, "Don't give up, Miss Ann." All these people. I have many giants in my life. My aunties, my uncles. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Walk into the door, go to somebody's house, you knock to this day, people laugh at me. But I was taught the hard way, you knock. If you didn't knock on my mother's door when you got to my mother's house and you dared to open the door and walk in my mother's house, my mother will make you go back out that door. Ask anybody. My mother will make you go back out that door and knock before you come in her house. <laughs> oh, yeah. My mama knew. Uh-uh. No, sir. Anybody that know my mama, they know, mm-mm, you bet not. And another thing, you bet not come in the house eating some food and not have enough for everybody in the house because my mother would surely talk about you. All kind of rules and things, and I thank God for them, and butt whoopings, all oh, teachers and principals, white principals whooping my butt. I didn't have a black principal who whooped my butt, but, yeah, getting whippings. I had Miss Ash and ass. Oh my God. I've had Mr. Um, oh my God, Miss Miller. Reverend Miller would come to our school and visit. His wife, Miss Miller, was a school teacher there. Oh my God, so many giants, so many giants in my life. I'm so thankful. Oh my God. But I never was taught. I never was around, you can't do this. Yeah, I had my daddy sometimes say, Oh, you're a dummy. And, and my mother's boyfriend, now he'll sit there and call me dummy when he's trying to teach me mad. Probably why I can't get mad because I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah. He probably uh, he humiliated me and now I can't get mad. But yes, you know, those. But other than that, oh, no. No, oh, you try it, you do it. You know, you go for it. You want to do something, you go. My cousin, Keith, he just celebrated his birthday. He was almost pro and playing playing basketball. You know, I mean, it's it, you. Any to me, any limitations that we had, it to me, my mother always had it like this. Nothing beats a failure but a try. And I used to laugh, and I ain't laughing. It used to mess me up when I was young, because I was like, oh, my gosh, she hurt my brain, because, you know, I was a little dingy. I was like, oh, my gosh, she hurt my brain. Nothing beat a failure but a try. What does that mean? You know, and it's true. So those are the things that I've always grown up around. So 
You want to do it, you try it. Either you succeed at it or you fail, whatever. You keep moving. You know, so I didn't have, I didn't, uh, I don't know nothing about that, you know. What the only limitation that I had is what I have allowed myself to have. And the main limitation that stopped me from being a lawyer and a journalist was my drinking. My choice to pick up a drink and start drinking. Nobody else's choice. My choice to pick up the drink and start drinking. And I drank a good part of my life away. But that's the past. And I have a future thanks, thanks to God, you know. And uh, that's what was. That's not what is now. And uh, so, yeah, uh, like I said, but mm, getting back to sister. I mean, she was serious, too. And black people, you can't have racism. I'm not going to go into detail because I was going to pull up the word racism and go toe to toe with her on that. I'm not going to do that because I had that. I dealt with that issue before. I worked a job. To feel this real quick. I wish I was in her face because I would love to have a conversation with her. No hand touching, but I would love to have a conversation with her when she's talking about racism and black people can't have racism. I had actually been told that before. And for, it was somebody told me that. I was working a job and the guy, my supervisor, didn't like the fact that I was a woman. My supervisor's black, I'm black. He didn't like the fact that I was a woman and the job position that I had. So he he wouldn't he didn't give me my uh promotional pay. So hello, show you that she don't know what she's talking about. When I did go to them about it, to the uh authority in the company about it. They said, well, you know, to the uh, union. Well, basically, you can't do nothing too much about it because he's black and you black. So it's not uh, uh, and he's not sexually harassing you. And so therefore, you can't use the race card because he's black. So I was like, wow, that seems so stupid. But what they come back, I said, well, OK, we that's cool right there. I said, but still. He was supposed to pay me. He was supposed to give me a pay, and he didn't give me my pay. I was supposed to switch hats. In a company, you switch, uh, when you promoted, you switch hats. He kept me in the white hat. I was supposed to go to a yellow hat, orange hat, or something. So, oh, uh, yeah, you're right. So, yeah, he, he's, uh, he's, uh, whatever word. I forget what word they use. Uh, he's, uh, he wasn't discriminating, but he was doing something. They found out. So anyway, they took it to him and dealt with it. Anyway, I got my back pay. They had to pay me all my back pay. And I got my promotion and everything. Yeah, and he was he was informed not to say anything to me, you know what I'm saying, anymore. You know, don't come to me real silly no more. But he did or he was man enough and he apologized, you know, because the guy that it was his boss was uh kin to him some type of way. So he had got on him too about it. But Oh God, his name just came to me, Lynn. Anyway, but yes. Mm-hmm. Woo, Lord Jesus. Yeah, don't tell me that you got to be defeated because you're black. That is so retarded. Now, uh-uh. Speak up. If you find injustice, you speak up about it. There's too many places and resources to go to. And she's sitting back like, what makes her so totally ignorant? And this is what, ooh, praise God, gnashes my teeth, is for her to have the audacity to speak for our white people. She said, not speaking for our white people. She said, if you take it to the up, <laughs> that's what got me more than anything, is that she is taking up on herself to speak for our white people by saying that. Oh, if you go to the judge, the judge is going to say this and he they going to all get together and they're going to dismiss that. What county are you? What box are you living in? Our white people are not prejudiced because you get that. You're prejudiced. You're having racism in you. Everybody's not like that. There are white people that stand for justice. They care if it wasn't. The world would really be really turned down and turned out it's going to black people, too. If everybody was the way she says everything is. But thank God it's not. But just listening to ignorant people, you know, this this is another thing. Oh, Lord, this is what I'm talking about, too. And I'm not going to get deep with it. But this is what I'm saying. I'm going to say this real quick. 
uh, uh, just a little bit of uh, my heart. I'm going to pour a little bit of my heart out to you. And then I'm, uh, I'm going to get off here and I'm going to upload this. Uh, and, you know, as usual, my house is open if you want to come and pray with me. And I have a new telephone number and I will be uh, passing that out soon. But uh, what if... Hypothetically, let's do it that way. Check it out. Hypothetically, pretend. Okay. What if you took a white child and a black child and you raised those children where they wasn't around anybody racist? They didn't hear no need, all of that. They didn't hear those words, none of that crap. None of those words. They didn't hear no racist word. They were just raised. They were raised with no limitations. Though, well, you never heard these two children, uh, for the sake of argument, let's make them boys. You have two, two young men, a black one and a white one. They're raised, same age, same environment. Uh, uh, parents, uh, uh, black parents, white parents, but they're raised. They're never taught anything about racism. They don't know anything about it. They're not listening to anything like that. There's no television in the house and no radio. So let's do it. Let's go a little bit Amish. Let's do that too because yeah, the, the, the world does come into kids' growth and everything. No video games out of there. Regular books. We talking, yeah, it's, we talking 2018, but we talking black, you know, let, let's do without all the electronics and stuff. But you raising these kids. They don't know none of that. But, but most important, these children are taught that they can do all things, not just through Christ who strengthens them, but they can do all things. They're not limited. They're taught, they're taught uh, the same, uh, the math, same English. They're taught, uh, everything is identical. They taught everything. What do you think would the outcome of their, those children would be? What do you think their future would have? When they did, Start going, get to the college level. They, they homeschooled. They're taught. When they did get in society, what do you think would happen? As far as college, they would succeed. There wouldn't be, they, they never seen any difference. The only time that they would be culture shocked, believe I, that's an actual word because it happened to me when I was young. Hello. The only thing that would devastate them is when they got into society. Other than that, they played together. They were together. They never seen any dealt with any racism. They would be doctors, lawyers, whatever they chose to be. They would be very pure and that would be beautiful. And that's what I pray for this world one day to be just pure, not constantly talking about the past racism and what happened although yeah it is sticks his uh, ugly head up often but like i said hypothetically wouldn't it be beautiful if those factors wasn't always present that we could have some children play with one another without all of this constant remindness of what was. But like I said, I'm a freak of nature and that's some of the things that, you know, I just want a better world for these children. And like I said, uh, when a person can take a gun and go into a school and just start shooting people, like I said, I I, I don't want to go into that because, like I said, you know, everybody know me with my mouth. I'm a, I'll say what I feel, but I, I want to pray about But that right there. I don't believe he's insane. I don't believe he's insane when he went and shot them kids, you know. But when you take in, uh, you go to a place and you start shooting and taking taking lives like that, the, the, the child rearing and the child's environment, all those things need to be evaluated. You know, uh, I don't want to go deep into that, but as you see, I'm not all for all electronics. Yes, I'm on the computer now, but there's a time and a place for everything. God says it, Proverbs, there's a time and a season. There's a season for everything. 
And some people have a season, 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 season. They keep repeating the same season over and over. And uh, we need to take care of them. They're little, they're young. We need to cultivate their minds and put in their minds and in their growth what needs to be there. Uh, but it can't, it can't happen overnight. But at the same time, we can't start working on it right now. We always know that with God, all things are possible. We just need to call on it. We need to have children call on him. I know numerous kids of this generation don't know nothing about no Jesus. Mm. So anyway, let me get out of here. I don't want to get long with it. I don't want to get too detailed. But like I said, that was for that chick too. Right there. Now, don't never say that. Black people can do anything. and there's, Our white people are not on her side when she's opening her mouth saying that. I don't want anybody to ever believe that. You know, justice is for all, especially if you, if you, uh, if you apprehend it, you know, uh, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Uh, like I said, I'll tell you a little bit more about what happened today. Like I said, I got to keep back and process it a little more. Uh, it's, it was a long day today, uh, but it was a beautiful day. It was nice and warm here. I was talking on the bus stop with a guy from Chicago, and it was just really, it was nice. It was nice and relaxing. It was really a nice and relaxing uh, conversation, you know. Uh, I had to catch the bus again, but uh, it, it, it was for a purpose, and uh, I spoke with the guy, and it, 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 it was really beautiful. It, it, I can't express it a little more, but... It, it was uh, it was special. It was a special moment. All we did, we talked about Chicago. We talked about the weather and stuff. But it was it was a mm. you know how you have something something can happen in your life and it's like man, it's, it's something behind this. This this is for a reason, and it was for a purpose. It was for a purpose. I don't know, but uh, he was telling me about Chicago, how it is, and all kind of little festivals and stuff they have there, and uh, and uh. It was just odd. It was really odd. It was it, 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 it was some it was something about it. It was just something about the moment. Not so much about him. It was nice that he just started talking, but you know, you know it was nice. He occupied my mind, you know, and and that was wonderful. So God bless the guy I met on the bus stop, you know. We rode the bus together and then he said Behind me on the bus and start talking and telling me more things. You know, a lot of things I didn't know about Chicago. For one thing, he said Chicago doesn't have drive through windows. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't drink anymore, but they don't have a drive through. He said they don't have drive through liquor store. He said if they did, he said they people are taking, get in there and drive out. I'm not bad for Chicago now. That's what this guy said. I don't know. I haven't been to Chicago, but that's what he was saying. Said R. Kelly's from Chicago. Uh, some basketball player. But uh, yeah, it, it was a beautiful day. And uh, it was a full day. So God bless you and keep you. And uh, thank you, my cousins, uh, for keeping me on my toes. I ain't lying. Well, y'all know how to pluck that nerve. I ain't lying. Just pull it out of me. Because I was like, hub right there. Oh my God. Yeah, she was special. So um you know the you know the routine. Every Tuesday, God willing, I'll be coming at you with a a, a message. Um uh, uh I'm I'm planning on adding a little twist. God God spoke to me today, so I, uh it's a new little twist to get ready to come to these, you know. Uh spark it up a little more and uh it's a lot of things going on. Guys, he's start. He's just moving. He's moving, uh, and I often want to rush him, but everything is in his timing. And really, when I look at it, it's for the best because he knows when I'm ready, and he knows when we're ready. When when it's time, I think you know, I'm gonna talk about me. I think I know what's good for me and what 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 time it should be given to me. You know, I want it now. <laughs> and God's like, nope, nope, not right now. You're not ready. You're not ready. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. 
<laughs> no, you attack niggas. You can't handle the truth. Yeah, you know, I had to get crazy right there, but God bless you and keep you. And uh, like I said, God bless all my Facebook and Twitter friends, Instagram. Uh, I found out I got I have a whole lot of things, so I have to update all my emails and everything. But uh, God bless you and keep all of you. Peace out.